net worth, asset allocation, 401ks and IRAs. How many of those terms did you really know when you were growing up? If you knew any, congratulations. But if you didn't know a single one, you are not alone. Financial literacy is a basic skill that just falls through the cracks all too often. And that's a problem because it's up to us as parents to make sure our children understand how to build wealth and leave a long-term legacy. So how do we drive home these important lessons? Let's talk about it today on Porsche. Welcome to Porsche. So how much do we really know about wealth building? What do we need to do to ensure a healthy financial future for our children? Well, family financial fitness is a topic that can be a bit taboo, but it's an important one to understand. And my guest today says achieving family financial fitness isn't as hard as it seems as long as you follow a few important steps. Take a look. Hi, Porsche. I'm Dr. Sean J. Harris. You know, there's a lot of emphasis placed on personal financial fitness, but as a father too, I think that sometimes we miss the importance of family financial fitness, especially when it comes to our children. We need to give our children the tools and the know-how to build and create wealth. I'd love to talk about it with you on Porsche. Well, then let's talk about it today on Porsche. Dr. Sean Harris, yes. a family fitness guru, but you also spend a lot of time coaching other people on how to do this. Absolutely. Right? From families, the parents and the children, right? And you yes. say that's important. Why? It is. It's very important because a lot of times in school, Portia, we're not taught about how to create income, how to start developing wealth. Right. So we always felt it very important to be able to teach kids at an early age fundamentals about finances. Mm -hmm. And so what does that look like, though? Because there are a lot of adults who are still struggling with the fundamentals of finances. So then how do you break down something like this in simple terms uh, to children? Well, first thing we do is we acclimate them. We expose them to different environments where they can have conducive environments to learning. And we just start teaching them the fundamentals and just start teaching them about financial terms, the definitions and their meanings. Gotcha. Now, I know you have an actually an interesting background, right? You were Correct. in the Air Force and you said, you know what, as you come out, you're a family man now, you've got to make some priorities here in terms of ensuring financial security for your own family. Yes. How did you make this transition from just a businessman and entrepreneur into making this the focus for your entire family? Well, I realized that I wanted different options. When I was working a nine to five, I knew that if I wanted to have a little bit more and be able to create more income and wealth, I had to do something different. So I, I delved into different areas of entrepreneurship and we started just kind of teaching that to our kids as we went along. And that way we were able to start developing different methods and instruments to use to be able to create generational wealth. Right. And there's no particular ethnic group that's, you know, struggling more than another, but in particularly with, with black families. Correct. This concept of having early conversations about building wealth when you're just still trying to make ends meet and pay bills. That's a difficult conversation to shift and start having with kids when you're just trying to figure out check to check, right? Correct. In our culture, we aren't taught about business development more so than other uh, nationalities. So we found it to be very beneficial to go ahead and start kids as early as they can start talking to start learning these fundamental principles about success and finances. So let's talk about the, this need to make sure, because kids, right, a lot of adults kind of glaze, oh, daddy's talking <laughs> about bills again, mom's talking about saving again. Is there a practical way to make kids understand this is why this impacts you now? This is not something that's going to affect you 25 years right. from now, the decisions we make right now. Yeah, it's very important to have family meetings. When I was growing up, Portia, we had family meetings where my parents called in uh, all the kids and we learned about the finances in the household to learn about the economic impact that our decisions were making on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So I think it's uh, important that kids learn early about the everyday budgeting, the fundamentals of finances in the house. And you did this um, with very young children as yes. well, but it's something that you talk about with other parents. Is there just one thing, because it's, if, it's, if you're not even really comfortable with your own understanding of finances, where would a family start? Where would a parent, a single parent, a couple start? I think, first of all, parents need to teach the kids about money, how money is made. There's three mm -hmm. money rules I like to talk about, right. and those are 
critically important because we have to learn how money is made first. Then what we have to do is learn how to hold on to the money, not necessarily just save it under the mattress, but to be able to cultivate it and to grow the money through investments. Right, right. And it's that cultivation, right? Because there's earning some money and then just sitting on it, right? You right. save it or there's putting it someplace and getting a return on your investment. Explain Absolutely. how that cultivation part. Yes, with that, we have to teach kids about investing, how investing works. It's like uh, when we put a seed into the ground, it will harvest bigger than what we put in. So it's like apple seeds. There's like three or four apple seeds uh, in every apple, but how many trees are in an apple? So once kids start understanding the fundamentals of growth that way, they can start better managing and understanding money. And then it's so important too, this concept of, you know, sort of saving and spending and investing and how you allocate which one is going to be more important, either by check to check in terms of, okay, <laughs> these bills are taken care of. And there's some people's families who believe in, you know, sort of in investing in your church or your mosque. How do you sit down with kids and with parents and say, here's how you divvy up those priorities. Mm -hmm. What we'd like to do is, uh, first of all, we have to make the money. That's the most priority thing. And then more importantly, we can't have that um, spender's mentality where we have mm -hmm. immediate gratification. You have to have delayed gratification. And then we explain to them, because we held on to this, now we can invest it and extrapolate the money. And then we have exponential growth with the money. Right. Don't get excited just because right. we've got a little extra bonus here <laughs> right. that came from, you know, whatever source that you can right. then go out and just quickly spend it. Exactly. Maybe take some of it and splurge and have a little fun, right. but take the rest of it and do something with it that has a payoff down the road, right? Absolutely. You have to be able to create income producing assets that will be cash cows that will continue uh, giving you revenue in uh -huh. the long term. And and talk to me about this concept of being a growing and teaching our children to be employees versus entrepreneurs. And not that there's one right way or wrong way, but sort right. of the benefits of planting that seed of entrepreneurship. Absolutely. I think it's critically important that we give kids an option instead of the traditional go to school, get good grades, go get a good job and work the 40, 40, 40 plan. Mm -hmm. Well, when we expose kids to different opportunities, different professions, uh, acclimate them to uh, what it's like to be a doctor, what it's like to be an engineer, a biochemist, just so many different professions it gives them a head start to be able to choose a proper path. Wow, that's a lot. That's yes. a lot. That is really very interesting. It's interesting how you've broken it down. And I know you've got some age appropriate tips as well, right? right. I Welcome back. We've been talking about the importance of family financial fitness with Dr. Sean Harris. Now, Dr. Harris, you have managed to pass along your passion and enthusiasm for financial fitness to your children, two yes. children, and one very talented young man named Caden. 11 years old, seventh grade, pretty yeah. impressive um, you. what you've already been able to teach him. How do you keep the kids from glazing over at such a young age? Well, what I would do is uh, I would take the kids with me to business meetings ever since they pretty much came out of the womb and they mm. would just get acclimated to different business uh, jargon and acumen. So one day, Caden just started asking a lot of questions. He said, listen, Dad, what do you guys talk about when you talk about a dividend? What is an asset? What's a liability? So I just said, you know what? He's really picking this up. So mm -hmm. I continued taking him to meetings with me and he just started catching on to it. And uh, one day he said, listen, Dad, I think that I should be able to put package this in a way where I can explain to kids what you explain to adults, mm -hmm. but in a kid kind of way. But it sounds to me like you also did something that is so important, which is keying in when your child identifies a particular gift. Absolutely. There was a business acumen, obviously at a very young age. So I know this is a young man, he played with puzzles, workbooks, flashcards. There were some things that you saw. It did not surprise you when he asked, what is a dividend, right? Right. Talk about how important it is for parents to sort of keep an eye out for the clues. That, Wait a minute, there might be something different here I need Absolutely. to tap into. Absolutely. So many times people think kids are to be seen and not heard, but when right. they're voicing out certain things, you have to listen to it and you have to fertilize that. So we started realizing that he was really uh, honing in on these skill sets. So we just fertilized, we, we exposed him, put him in environments where he could really learn and we just started putting books in front of him so he can really uh, grasp the concept. But you ended up putting a whole lot more than books in front of him. You put a yeah. whole bus in front of him, right? Yes. Let's talk about this financial literacy bus. This is not your ordinary bus. Right. Explain. Well, in school, they just don't teach financial literacy in school. So Caden said, listen, Dad, I have an idea to be able to take a bus 
and convert it into a mobile financial learning center. So he told me about it, he said, listen, I wanna put a bank in there, I wanna put a stock exchange, I wanna put it at a grocery store. So we uh, just took his idea and with the profits from his own company, he bought a bus. Wow, this sounds like a, a fancy bus. We yes. gotta show people exactly how this works. So I went out and met, Kate, met with Caden on the bus to see exactly what happens on his financial bus tours. Take a look. Oh, sitting here waiting for this bus, trying to get my financial life together here. Supposed to be here any minute. Oh, there it is. What is this? This is Caden's financial bus. Well, how about that? Show me the way, young man. Okay. Welcome aboard Caden's financial bus. We have my mock bank where kids can learn how to deposit and withdraw their money. My mock ATM. We even have my two tablet stations mm -hmm. where kids will be doing most of their work. My mock stock exchange where kids will be able to learn how to invest in stocks. That's pretty cool. Thank you. We have my two TV towers to the left and the right. And personally, my favorite part, we have the Mott Grocery Store. And what happens at the Mott Grocery Store? Kids can learn their needs versus their wants. We also have my produce section and the checkout area where kids can learn how to make transactions. Well, what was it about financial literacy? Why did you want to teach financial literacy to young people? Why was that so important to you? Well, I would go to business meetings with my dad and I would always see that people were talking about financial literacy, but at that point I didn't understand what financial literacy was. So what kind of meetings was your dad taking you to? He would take me to business meetings, common commerce meetings, and it was just a ton of business meetings that I didn't understand what they were talking about. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so I decided to take it upon myself to learn about financial literacy and be able to to teach your kids a way, in a way that they could understand. So how old were you when you started all of this with your dad? I was seven years old when I started my business, but he's been taking me to business meetings probably since I was five. Really? And were you like, Dad, what are we doing here? Yes, but I would always get intrigued by some of the things that they were talking about. Okay. Um, what's the most intriguing part of uh, financial literacy to you? I, I would probably say earning money because you can't save, budget, or invest your money without earning it. Mm. Tell me more. What do, well, do you think kids understand how important it is to start earning money and saving it, not just earning it and then spending it? Yes, I think that that's very important because one thing I've noticed is that if kids, as soon as they get money, they just decide to spend it on whatever they want. Yeah, yeah. So you want them to learn what when they're on your bus? I want them to be able to learn how to earn, save, budget, and invest their money. All right, so you said Part of checking out of the bus is learning about the difference between wants versus needs, right? Yes. Yeah. So I've got juice, chips, popcorn, ice cream, milk, but if I'm really thinking about what I want to buy versus what I need to buy, I probably need to put it with the chips, right? Yeah. The popcorn and the ice cream. And okay. At least so. But that saves some money, right? So now I've got juice and I've got the eggs and I've got the milk, right? Yeah. That's a great lesson, Kaden. Thank you. Thank you for touring my bus. Thank you for the tour. That was so awesome. You are a very impressive young man. Thank you. I'll see you on the show, okay? Okay. All right. Caden, 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 that is some special bus, man. I am Thanks. still so impressed. Listen, just quickly, tell me why, again, was it so important for you to be sort of this leader at seventh grade to teach financial fitness to young people? I would say the biggest reason that it's so important for kids to learn about financial literacy at an early age is because I often find that most kids graduate high school without even knowing the basics about financial literacy. Right, you can barely write a check. Now yeah. it's all Apple Pay and all these things <laughs> yeah. and all these electronic options and people don't know the basics, right? Yeah, definitely. 
So you feel like young people are listening to you and hearing you when you're trying to explain how important it is? I definitely do because kids always love my bus and always gravitate, <laughs> always gravitate to me because they like to learn in a fun and interactive way. Wow, well you've made it really very interesting and it is really fun. I love the part where you can check out and there's a whole stock market bell on there. That is really cool. All Thank right, we're gonna you. talk more about your bus coming up and share some more of your family's financial fitness tips and we'll be right back with more from Caden and his father tips you will not want to miss Welcome back. We have been talking to Dr. Sean Harris and his son Caden about the importance of financial literacy and family financial fitness. Uh, Dr. Harris, you've got some tips on how to achieve this with your family. But first, we need to talk a little bit more about that bus. Let's let's unpack the bus a little bit. Let's get on it and then unpack it. That is okay. impressive, all the resources that you have. How did you raise funds for so many different learning tools on that bus? Well, I originally bought the bus with my own money from selling my products from over the years, but I had a crowdfunding for over $50,000 to refurbish the bus, to create a mock bank, a mock grocery store, and a mock stock exchange inside of it. And so it was a lot of folks in the community who just helped you put it together and get all the things and all the tools that you would need on there, right? Definitely. That must have been really cool to see all of those components come together. It was amazing. Yeah, it really is. Well, Dad, let's talk more a little bit about how you do this. Obviously not everybody can build a bus for right. financial <laughs> fitness, right. but those principles are there. Let's yes. talk about what families need to do, what everyone can realistically do at home. Right. Some of the first things we should recommend that we do is to bring the kids into the conversation, mm -hmm. bring them to the financial fold and understand how money works in the household. Mm -hmm. Second, what I recommend to do is to leverage credit. If as parents, if you have good or great credit, leverage that credit and put your kids on as authorized users. And this puts them in a great position to be able to leverage making good sound economic decisions. Quickly though, at what age though? Because that can be tricky right. when you're talking about big item purchases that end up getting leveraged in said credit, right? Right, right. well it uh, depends on the bank, but some uh, banks don't have an age limit. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you can put them on, now here's the thing, we don't give them the credit card. Right. But they're able to mirror the credit usage. Right. So whatever we do in our credit, it'll reflect on theirs, and then we just kind of budget from there. And then there's, it's important to give your kids ways to earn money and not just chores around the house, some concrete uh, tasks that right. generate a certain amount of income, right? Yes. Absolutely. And one of the things there is that we find a skill set. If you see that your kids have a particular skill set, as mm -hmm. we said earlier, just kind of fertilize that and start cultivating and teach them how they can monetize their ideas. How did you monetize? Well, we saw the bus. We know how you monetize it. What was the first sort of chore that you had around the house? What were the ways that you raised money around the house? Well, the first way that I actually got my own money, there was this game I wanted. So I decided to work in our family cleaning company. Ah. I would take the trash from around the building, and I was able to get $20, which was enough for the game. Wow. Excellent idea. And that's stuff anybody can do that at home, right? You give Absolutely. Some, some, think there's some tasks that you can maybe be do at your employers but if yeah. especially if you're self-employed right that's right. that entrepreneurial key there absolutely great yes. advice and I'm so inspired and I'm sure a lot of parents and kids are inspired just to seeing what the two of you have done at 11 I can't even <laughs> wait to see what you do next starting at 7 and here we are at 11 impressive job young man thank you good job to mom and thank dad you. thank you very much all right thank you so much all right we'll be right back Let's connect on social media. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Porsche TV Show.
You know, we hear a lot about building generational wealth, right? But you always build from the bottom, a strong, solid foundation. And if we bring our sons and daughters into the process when they're young, they can learn from our mistakes as well as from our financial success. But remember now, the lessons that we're teaching are critical. Saving up for what we want instead of relying on credit to buy what we want. And then they're showing our children how to discern between wants versus needs. Let's start that conversation now while they're young. Being financially fit isn't always about how much money you have in your wallet right now. It's not even about how hard you have to work for your money. Long term, it's about making your money work for you over the long haul. So let's show our kids how to build wealth. Thanks for watching. Be the reason why somebody smiles today.